As a little girl, one of the stories that stuck with me was The Wizard of Oz. The character that I identified with was the Tin Man and his desire to connect with people to be a better human. I also really wanted that heart-shaped clock. Though a children's story, The Wizard of Oz is sometimes seen as a representation of the U.S. in the late 19th century. The Tin Man represented steelworkers, the scarecrow farmers in the barren Great Plains. The Wicked Witch was a manifestation of drought that was defeated at the end with water. As for Toto, sometimes a dog is just a dog. <laughs> Today, global problems like poverty, homelessness, and food insecurity are wicked, just like the witch and the drought she represented. Wicked problems are complex, ever-changing, and interconnected. Wicked problems have no easy solution and cannot be solved by any one entity alone. Take, for example, climate change. By 2050, 1.2 billion people will be displaced due to wildfires, sea level rise, and extreme weather events. National governments are constantly dealing with these problems and its aftermath. Now, I'm a student of international affairs, and I believe in the power of diplomacy. But have you been to a UN climate summit? Think Thanksgiving dinner for a week with 45,000 people, but the food is terrible, there is no football, and the leftovers are more work. <laughs> I've spent my career trying to tackle wicked problems from all around the world, North America, Europe, Asia, and from different vantage points, government, corporation, higher ed. And in all this time, I have learned two major points. One, in order to solve wicked problems, you must go local. And two, in going local, you must broaden your lens on who can contribute to the solution. Take Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania as an example. When some of you think of Pittsburgh, you might think of the Pittsburgh Steelers. But even as this team won multiple Super Bowls, its namesake, the Steelworkers, suffered intense layoffs due to competition and automation. This led to the wicked problem of a downward economic spiral, with businesses and people fleeing the region. The subsequent drain in taxes made it harder to keep the infrastructure from crumbling. It became increasingly hard to attract or retain dynamic companies or talented people. Yet, Pittsburgh was able to reinvent itself and address this wicked problem. Once known for its series of polluted factories along the Allegheny River, today, Pittsburgh is a hub of technology, education, and medicine. While Heinz ketchup is no longer manufactured there, autonomous vehicles are being tested that could deliver Heinz ketchup. This turnaround was brought when the corporations joined forces with city government, foundations, and nonprofits. Universities like Carnegie Mellon trained the next generation of innovators. Companies like Google hired those innovators. Foundations like Mellon supported the social infrastructure to keep those innovators and their families in the region. As for the city, among its many actions and policies, one included opening itself up for the startup community as a testing bed. How did the city do this? Previously, I led the city's Innovation and Performance Department. With a visionary mayor and the support of the city behind us, my team and I were tasked with advancing urban sustainability and improving city services. Yet, even in this highly conducive environment, we could not move forward alone. Instead of seeing resources as zero-sum, 
we decided to create a new game where partnerships were infinite and could exponentially increase resources if shared and leveraged. There is a proliferation of local startups that has a similar goal of combating homelessness, improving the environment, addressing health and safety issues. What they lacked was a place to prototype, test, and refine their products and services. The city created a six-month public-private partnership program that paired select local startups with various local government agencies throughout the region. Startups got a chance to prototype and get invaluable feedback. Local government agencies got critical innovations that they might not have heard about, and both got to address wicked problems together. To address food insecurity and waste, one startup had businesses post when free or excess food was available for public pickup. Another had a novel way of addressing the digital divide by providing drone training and education to communities of color. Not every pilot worked, but there was always a lesson to be learned. Now, truth be told, I no longer work at the city, but this pilot program a partnership built between the local government and the local startup community consists and persists to this day. Since its founding, 44 pilots have been completed, with another four getting additional paid engagements with the city, and many more getting other opportunities based on its experience with the city. Why has this program survived and even thrived despite leadership transitions and changes? Two words: trust and relationships built over an extended period of time. The program's enduring success speaks to its ability to commit the parties to work together, stay, and better the region. But we can't stop there. To solve wicked problems, we must go local and broaden our lens on who can contribute to the solution. Q in Valdosta, Georgia. Valdosta, Georgia is a city of 55,000 people located in South Georgia near the Florida border. Unlike Atlanta, Valdosta suffers from the wicked problem of traffic congestion. While traffic congestion may be expensive, time-consuming, and inconvenient for some, it can be lethal to the people that first responders are trying to help in an emergency. Even a few seconds can be a matter of life and death. Valdosta could have turned the problem over to a small group of specialists, say traffic engineers or a tech consultancy, and get limited results. Instead, they widened their thinking and invited a diverse group of local innovators that might not have intersected but had the combined expertise, resources, and experience to create a better solution together. Valdosta's engineering and fire department, along with two universities, an IT company, and members of the community, created and implemented a smart traffic management system that replaced and connected all 128 of the city's traffic lights to address that solution. The two universities, Georgia Tech and Valdosta State, led the data analytics and modeling and incorporated the project into the engineering curriculum. The IT company opened up with the application development and implementation. 72 firefighters were trained on the technology, and over 900 community members engaged in the project workshops. The end result? 10 to 11 seconds were saved at every single intersection. No small feat when every second counts. Valdosta integrated and strengthened its physical, digital, and social infrastructure, and its benefits will be felt far into the future. Valdosta improved the physical flow of traffic, responding to live and changing conditions in real time. Its digital infrastructure improved with increased community feedback and engagement. Its social infrastructure was strengthened when future engineers 
cared not only about the robustness of the traffic system, but its impact on people. Valdosta and Pittsburgh are beacons of community-centered partnerships done right. They take the best and most applicable technologies, leveraged resources, and informed research to then create a new space for more people and organizations to come together. To innovate, fail, fail again, or multiple times, then succeed. In Pittsburgh, the public and private sectors join forces to create much more value than either sector alone could generate. Its beneficiaries were the residents, some who become innovators themselves. Over time, this ripple effect generated greater and greater bands of social and financial capital for everyone. In Valdosta, people across professional and demographic spectrums came together to solve a wicked problem to affect people at their most vulnerable. The outcome goes beyond upgraded traffic lights. Community-centered partnerships give those that might not have had a voice, that might have felt invisible, a chance to be empowered not just by the solution, but by the process. The next time you are looking at a wicked problem, ask yourself two questions. One, who is missing in this room? And two, how can you create the space and welcome them? And perhaps through these new community-centered partnerships, you will earn your own heart-shaped clock.